Factories and services play an important role in AngularJS applications. So in this section, we're going to focus on a few things. First off, what are factories and services? Why would you want to use them? Does AngularJS have some built-in ones? What's the quick answer there is yes, it does. And how do you create your own factories and services and use those in your apps? As mentioned, factories and services play an important role, and AngularJS provides several of these out of the box that you can use, which I'll show you in just a moment. But in a nutshell, all factories and services boil down to what we call singletons. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, a singleton is a single object up in memory that just kind of hangs around, and then other objects such as controllers can interact with that single instance. Now, why would you want to use them? Well, you might want to put your AJAX calls in one particular place so that multiple controllers can reuse that code and you don't duplicate the code. You might have some business rules that are shared across controllers or other components in your app. Calculations, sharing data between controllers, all of these things and more would be good use cases for using factories or services. Now, when it comes to working with factories and services, you can create your own through a module. So up to this point, you've already seen how a module can be used to configure routes. We've touched on filters and directives, and we've looked at controllers. Well, modules are also used to create factories or services. And then there's some related terms we'll talk about as well called constants and value. So we'll get to that a little bit later. You can write your own, or you can use some built-in factories or services. Now, AngularJS provides many different factories and services out of the box, and they really just call them services, regardless of what they are. But here's a quick look at some of the key ones that are built in, and we'll talk about a few of these throughout this module. So when you want to make AJAX calls, you can use $HTTP to do that. Timeout can be used in much the same way as window.setTimeout. $Window is the Angular way to get to the window object if you need to. Location will get you to the actual URL and different information about it, such as the hash, you can get to the host and those types of things. Q is used with asynchronous processes such as AJAX calls and others. Root scope is used behind the scenes to actually create new scopes as we, for instance, use controllers. In addition to the timeout that I showed earlier, we also have interval. So if you'd like a repeating type of timer going, you can use dollar interval to do that. Dollar filter can be used to programmatically get to any custom filters or others that Angular has that you might want to get to in a controller. And then finally, dollar log kind of does what it says. You can use this for general logging purposes. Now, this isn't all of the services by any means, but this is a few of the key ones that you might encounter, and we'll talk about a few of these throughout the module. So now that we've looked at some of the fundamental concepts of services, factories, the fact that they're singletons, and what they're used for, let's dive into how we get started creating and using these.